yes. yes what could be the answer for this uh the core is uh, copper because it conducts electricity well yes that's absolutely correct the answer is b the plastic coating and the metal core so over here the statement is says that the coating is plastic because it conducts electricity well that's incorrect because plastic is an insulator the core of copper because it conducts electricity well and that's the reason all your cable wires inside there is a copper wire because of its very high conductivity so answer for this is b next one when a substance x is electrolyzed the amount of gas p and q are formed what is substance x so one here can you tell me what will be the substance x over here um, this is it c okay c let us check whether your answer is correct or not so now when substance x is electrolyzed the amount of gases p and q are formed now p is is at negative electrode so which means negative this is cathode and this is anode so let us let us write over here for negative and for positive now concentrated aqueous nacl so nacl plus h2o but it is concentrated at negative electrode there will be h2 and at positive electrode there will be cl2 for b concentrated hydrochloric acid it will again be h2 and cl2 because it is concentrated so oxygen will not be liberated at anode it will be the another it will be halide which will be liberated at anode dilute sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid will have h2 and o2 and molten lead bromide is pb and br2 now d option automatically gets ruled out okay d option automatically gets ruled out the reason is because they are telling that p and q both are gas so over here p is solid and q is a gas so d gets ruled out now question is can you see the difference over here the p has more volume and q has less volume okay this is what we have to understand when there is h2 and o2 means water is liberated as h2o versus in this two cases which is hcl so in hcl in hcl hydrogen is to chlorine ratio is 1 is to 1 means the gap or the gas which is produced has to be in equal ratio but when we talk about h2o hydrogen to oxygen ratio is 2 is to 1 so h2 will be double amount and that's the reason answer is c is everybody clear why the answer is c c a and b a and b both are gas hydrogen and chlorine so answer can be a b or c but why it is c because you need to check the difference over here the volume and h2o which is water the amount of volume uh, sorry the volume of hydrogen which is produced is actually more okay um, volume of hydrogen produced is actually more okay let's go to the third question what are the products at electrodes when dilute sulfuric acid is electrolyzed using inert electrodes we just now did it about dilute sulfuric acid which is h2so4 plus h2o in large quantity h2o will be in more quantity because it is dilute so alia can you tell me what could be at anode and what could be at cathode Yes, miss. Um, at the anode, it will be oxygen. Yes, because it is dilute, so at anode it will be oxygen, and, and at it will be hydrogen. So yes, that's absolutely correct. So answer has to be B. The only option which has anode as oxygen is B. Okay, fourth one. Electricity is passed separately through conch HCl. concentrated aqueous sodium chloride and dilute sulfuric acid 
in which rows are the electrolysis product correctly named? Manas? Yes, Manas. What will be the answer? Um, For concentrated HCl, it's concentrated HCl. So HCl plus H2O. So definitely I know that hydrogen will be one of the product. Miss, um, miss, it is C, one and three only. Okay, let us check, let us check. So over here, hydrogen is definitely one of the product. Everybody agrees with that. Hydrogen will be one of the product. So we know that hydrogen is a positive ion, so it will be liberated at cathode. So hydrogen and chlorine, so one has to be my answer. Now, how many options? So can I say D automatically gets ruled out? Now I have to check for two. Concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. Now in concentrated aqueous sodium chloride, we have NaCl plus H2O, but we know that for between Na plus and H plus, okay, between Na plus and H plus, there is only hydrogen which will be liberated. Means at cathode, there cannot be sodium. So this is ruled out. So if second is ruled out, which option is left? One and three. We don't even have to go to check the third option. We can directly write one and three because there is no option as only one. Okay, so that's why the answer is C. Question number five. Which row describes the electrolysis of molten potassium bromide? Noura? Which row describes the electrolysis of molten potassium bromide? Miss uh, B, bromine at the anode and potassium at the cathode. Yes, since it's molten potassium bromide, okay, KBr molten, it will be K plus plus Br minus. So K plus will give K and Br minus will give you Br2. Negative will go to anode and positive will go to cathode. So bromine and potassium answer is B. Good. Next one, sixth one. Okay, sixth one, Jessica. The diagram shows a section of an overhead power cable. Which statement explains why a particular substance is used? It would be A, aluminum has a low density and is a good conductor of electricity. Yes. So overhead power cables will have aluminum because Aluminium has a lower density, so we need something which, you know, so that it does not sag. So that's why aluminium is a metal with a low density and yes, it's a metal, so it will have a good conductor of electricity. So the answer is absolutely correct. Very good. Seventh one. Seventh one, Kashni will answer this. The diagram shows the electrolysis of concentrated HCl and concentrated aqueous sodium chloride using carbon electrodes. At which electrodes is hydrogen produced? Yes, at which electrode is hydrogen produced? See, we know that hydrogen produces from H+. Means it has to be a negative electrode. So, Electrode 1 and electrode 3, wherever there is 1 and 3, automatically gets ruled out. So A automatically gets ruled out. So now, yes, Kashni. Um, I think it's C. Okay, let us check. Two, two, two. Yeah. Okay. Now, concentrated HCl... Okay, concentrated HCl, can I say H2 will be formed, H2 and Cl2 will be formed? Yeah. So which means at electrode, uh, at electrode 2, it is going to be formed. So 2 has to be there and electrode, uh, this A is also incorrect. Now, concentrated mm -hmm. aqueous sodium chloride. So NaCl plus H2O, can I say there are four ions, Na plus Cl minus, H plus, and OH minus. Competition between Na plus and H plus. Who is less reactive? Who is less um, reactive? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. So can I say H2 will be formed because what's the rule of cathode? 
the less reactive less reactive the ion will deposit yeah the answer will be 2 and 4 okay, okay. The answer will be 2 and 4 so for such kind of a questions take a moment take a moment okay take a moment and just think of the products and you will get the answer okay okay next question question number 8 nabiha what are the electrode products when molten silver iodide is electrolyzed between inert electrodes what are the electrode products when molten silver iodide is electrolyzed between inert electrodes yes nabiha let so yes molten electrolyte so it's ag plus and i minus so ag plus silver at cathode and iodine and anode that's absolutely correct good next one uma copper and hydrogen can be made from formed by electrolysis at which electrodes are these elements formed copper and hydrogen can be made each from electrolysis at which electrode are these copper. elements from copper at the cathode and um, hydrogen at the cathode as well yes that's absolutely correct so answer is d we know that copper is cu2 plus and hydrogen is h plus so we need to check the ions both the ions are positive so they will be they will be Discharge at negative electrode, which is cathode. That's absolutely correct. Good. Tenth one. Arno. The diagram shows a failed attempt to copper plate a pan. Which action will plate the pan with copper? Yes, Arno. Miss, is it D? Yes, that's absolutely correct. It is D. Now this is this is a part of electroplating. In electroplating, what is what is the rule in electroplating? The rule is the rule is the object to be plated. The object to be plated will be at negative electrode. The object to be plated will be at negative electrode. that's cathode okay so that's why you need to just switch the terminals the object that is the pan will be at cathode and the metal to be at anode okay next one the okay, next one who is left andrew the diagram shows the electroplating of a steel object a student <clears throat> made the following statements which statements are correct 1 and 3 One and <clears throat> three. Let's check. Now, copper is the metal and uh, copper sulfate steel object. Now, object turns reddish brown color. Yes, it will turn reddish brown color because of the deposition of copper. Okay. So, statement one is correct, which means option B is wrong. the copper sulfate solution changes to pale blue color no we we haven't learned about changing the color of copper sulfate so no that's incorrect and copper electrode becomes smaller yes we have learned that anode gets diminished so 1 and 3 answer is c absolutely correct okay let's come to 12th one 12th one we'll start with the uh, manas an object is electroplated with silver using an aqueous silver salt which set of con conditions is used must so be object that has to be electroplated should be at the cathode correct and the other electrode should also be made of silver hence the answer is d that's absolutely correct because we have just now learned that for electroplating the object to be plated should be at anode oh, sorry it should be at cathode and whichever metal we need to electroplate that has to be connected to anode that's correct manas okay next one nura the diagram shows an electrolysis experiment 
during the electrolysis sodium was formed at electrode p okay and chlorine at electrode q which row correctly identifies p q and x miss d okay so let us check if electrode p has to be sodium means it is na plus so your electrode p needs to be negative negative means it has to be cathode so answer cannot be a and b if p is cathode q has to be my anode so answer has to be from c and d now there is only one possibility where there is na plus um, i mean sodium can be liberated if it is a molten electrolyte there can be only molten electrolyte where na plus is liberated so answer becomes d very good next okay 13 this is the questions till your 13 questions so this gives an overview as how the questions on electrolysis is asked any doubts in this questions like anybody have not understood any questions or some of you have written wrong answer yes any doubts in this questions in mcq yes no can we go for structured questions yes okay yes miss okay so let's go to structured questions now structured questions over your important challenges that we need to understand the markings like what marks they have asked for and how much to write because it's not that they demand for so many you know stories or something like that so we have to be very crisp in writing the answers okay so let us go with uh, question number 1 okay question number 1 question number 1 asks that aluminum is an important metal with a wide range of uses aluminum is obtained by electrolysis of aluminum oxide which is dissolved in molten cryolite okay solid aluminum oxide solid aluminum oxide is a poor conductor of electricity it conducts either when molten or when dissolved in molten cryolite explain why now it's a two mark question so akbar can you tell me what could be the answer for this what you have written uh so what i've written is adding cryolite increases conductivity and melting up loosens up the particles allowing electricity to pass through Uh, can you repeat the second point? Uh, melting it loosens up the particles, allowing electricity to pass through. Loosen up the particles. Yeah, what I was thinking was is kind of hard to explain, so I just thought of the first thing that came to mind. Okay, uh, you are uh, your explanation is correct, but uh, the first statement which you said that cryolite is added so as to increase the conductivity. Okay. but over here the question they are asked they have asked this solid aluminum oxide is a poor conductor of electricity it conducts either when molten or when dissolved in molten cryolite which means which means that um, we need to we need to ask uh, yeah and yes uh, andrew because uh... Aluminium oxide is an ionic uh, compound, and it can only it doesn't conduct electricity in solid state. It can either conduct when molten or uh, dissolved in another, uh, in something else which is molten. Yeah, me. Yeah, correct. So basically, uh, to increase the conductivity, like why do we say that it has to be in molten state or in aqueous state? The reason is because. in molten state it will be i mean in liquid state there will be more movement of ions and that's the reason that ionic compound in molten or liquid state conducts electricity okay so what we should write over here is that in solid state in solid state there are no free ions so that gives me a reason for why solid aluminum oxide do not conduct electricity so in solid state there are no free ions but in molten or liquid state 
but in molten or liquid state, there are movement of P ions. which conducts electricity, which conducts electricity. Okay, so this gives us two marks. Moving on to the next question. Why is a solution of aluminum oxide in molten cryolite is used rather than molten aluminum oxide? Now over here is the answer that it is used to reduce the melting point or to increase the conductivity when dissolved in cryolite. So over here, one you can write to reduce the melting point because it's a one mark question. So reduce the melting point, that is one mark. Or we can write that to increase the conductivity of electrolytes, okay? So to increase the conductivity of electrolytes. Okay, next one. Explain why carbon anodes need to be replaced periodically. So, Kashni, why carbon anodes need to be replaced periodically? I'm actually not sure. Is it because they're um, explosive? Okay, mm. it's not because Ms. yes. Uh, carbon anodes. Keep, sorry. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah. No. Tell. No problem. Uh, Miss, does it uh, keep on getting? Um, I think it starts breaking every time it gets used. Ha! It gets used up, or the me, or if, we can yeah. write it in a better way as it reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide because oxygen is liberated at anode, right? So carbon anodes, now at anode in the electrolysis of alumina, it's oxygen which is liberated. So we can write that carbon reacts with O2 forming carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. Oh. Okay, next one, Vodhya will answer. One reason why graphite is used for electrodes is that it is a good conductor of electricity. Uh, is that because it is a good conductor of electricity? What can be another use? Um, I wrote that graphite's inert. Yes, very good. It is inert or it is unreactive. It is inert or un reactive okay next one aluminium is used to make food containers because it resists corrosion explain why it is not attacked by acids in the food uh jessica or why it's unreactive and prevents corrosion Yes, so basically what happens, like why do we also use aluminum foil to protect our food or to, uh, you know, to uh, keep our food for a longer time? The reason is because aluminum has a power to make an oxide layer on itself. That's basically that process is called as anodizing. So aluminum has a, it forms a protective layer, which is aluminum oxide, which covers the aluminum from getting you know, corroded because it is the metal which gets corroded. It's not the oxide layer which gets corroded. So let's say, suppose if this is an aluminum wire. So aluminum wire is exposed to the environment and it forms an oxide layer. It forms a protective layer on itself, which is aluminum oxide, which prevents further corrosion of aluminum. So since it's a two mark question, okay, we, we need to write, we, we uh, definitely that one point will not suffice. So we have to write both the points that why it is not attacked by acid. So we will write that uh, aluminum forms a protective layer of aluminum oxide, aluminum oxide, 
on it which prevents which prevents further corrosion okay which prevents further corrosion of aluminium and that's how aluminium is protected okay that's how aluminium is protected okay coming on to the next question the c part aluminium is used for overhead power electricity cables which usually have a steel core give two properties of aluminium which makes it suitable for this use now this was you know a interlinked question which we had done in multiple choice so nabiha can you tell me what could be other two properties why aluminium is used on the overhead power cable okay okay no problem honya can you tell me um miss arrow that it's a good conductor of electricity and that it's lightweight yes that's absolutely correct that's absolutely correct so it is because of its low density and it conducts electricity because see, it's a metal so it will conduct electricity so number 1 because of its low density and second one because good conductor of electricity next explain why the cables have a steel core adi can you tell me what could be the answer why it has a steel core um so it can conduct electricity faster steel will not conduct electricity because steel is an alloy i'm not sure yes anybody who has raised hands yes andrew question yes so remember remember over here when we are when we are having a metal which is in pure state like let's say iron it will conduct electricity because it's a metal but why that iron is been converted into an alloy like which is a steel because alloys all alloys will have a greater strength as compared to the pure metal that's also the reason that if you if we want to make any jewelry we never make jewelry of 24 karat gold okay 24 karat gold yes it is it is costliest but we 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 don't make jewelry out of it because it is very very soft when we go to buy jewelry it is always 22 karat or 21 or 18 so the highest jewelry is of 22 carat which means 22 parts will be gold and two parts can be some different element element like uh, it can be copper silver maybe germanium or anything so the reason is because pure metal is very very soft so when we convert it into alloy it is always because to strengthen the property so over here explain why the cables have a steel core so steel is an alloy so it is because to increase the strength to increase the strength okay so this was about our first question let's go to question number 2 now question number 2 is the purification of bauxite uses large amount of sodium hydroxide okay that's for purification describe the chemistry of how naoh sodium hydroxide is made from concentrated aqueous sodium chloride the description must include at least one ionic equation and it's a five mark question so yes andrew can you tell me or uh, when concentrated aqueous sodium uh, chloride is electrolyzed chlorine uh, forms at the positive uh, electrode and also sodium hydroxide and at uh, the negative electrode hydrogen is formed okay and we have to also include one equation correct 
So now over here, since see one, two, three, four, five, there are five lines. We have five marks. So how to write such equations, such questions? So how do we write such questions? Is we write what what all things are required in an electrolysis? So we will write that electrolyte used. is concentrated aqueous NaCl, concentrated aqueous NaCl at anode, at anode, chlorine gas is liberated. Or to be precise, we can also write greenish yellow gas chlorine is liberated at cathode. H2 gas is liberated. Uh, electrolyte used is concentrated uh, aqueous NaCl, and we need to write one more point over here using electrolysis as a technique so at anode at cathode and then we have to write the solution contains or we can write the solution is left with na plus and oh minus ions forming NaOH and equation. So we can write any anode or cathode equation, whichever is convenient. So anode equation, since that anode is chlorine and it is oxidation loss of electrons. So Cl minus losing electron forming Cl, but we know Cl is diatomic, so Cl2, so two Cl minus minus two electrons. And one more extra we can write as cathode equation, which is H plus plus electron forming H and H2, 2H plus and two electrons. So this gives you one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark, and total five. Okay. Because they have asked us to at least mention one ionic equation. Okay, let's go to the next question. Making sodium hydroxide from sodium chloride product produces two other chemicals. Name these two chemicals and state one use of it. So along with sodium hydroxide, we know another chemical produces hydrogen. And what's the use of hydrogen? We can write in making ammonia. is one of the use of hydrogen or it is used as a fuel. That is also one of the uses of hydrogen. Another chemical which is produced is chlorine gas. So use of chlorine gas is uh, as a disinfectant. Or we can also write or making in making HCl, it is used in swimming pools, making PVC, so many things. Sanitation is, sanitation cannot be a actual word. Disinfection or disinfectant, or we can write water treatment or killing bacteria. That needs to be there. Okay. Miss Howard for bleach. Yes, we can also write use as a bleaching agent. It can be used to make bleach, to make bleach also. That's also correct. Okay, so this was about question number two. So it's total seven marks, 13 marks is actually there is something else also. Okay, any doubts still here? Can we go for the next question? Question number three. Okay, uh, I'll be just back in two minutes.
Now, during electrolysis, ions move in the electrolyte and electrons move in the external circuit. So ions is something which will be moving inside the electrolyte and electrons will be moving in an external circuit. Now, reaction occurs at electrode. The diagram shows the electrolysis of molten lithium iodide, which is LiI. Draw an arrow on the diagram to show the direction of electron flow in the external circuit, how it will be. Miss, from left to right? From left to right means from negative terminal to positive or from anode to cathode? Um, anode to cathode. Yeah, remember electrons, the flow of electrons, flow of electrons will be from anode to cathode. So it will be like this. Okay, anode to cathode. Because anode is what? Loss of electrons and who is gaining the electrons? Cathode. So anode will lose electrons from their electrons will travel to cathode and that is how the flow of electrons is. Next one, electrons are supplied to the external circuit. How and where is this done? So we can say that, we can say that at anode, okay, at anode, oxidation takes place. Oxidation takes place, which is loss of electrons miss sorry i didn't understand the above question you said anode to cathode but isn't the negative electrode cathode so anode to cathode correct so from anode it will be going and electrons will be oh sorry so it will be like this Yeah, it will be from anode to cathode, correct. From negative to positive. Means anode from anode, the electrons will travel and it will go to positive electrode. Oh, sorry, to, towards cathode, from anode to cathode, basically. Okay, so at anode, oxidation takes place, which is loss of electrons and it is gained by cathode where reduction takes place. Okay, so this is about how electrons are formed from anode. I mean, anode will lose electrons and that electrons will be taken up by cathode. Question number two, electrons are supplied to the external circuit. Okay, this is repeat. This is a repeat question. Third one, explain why solid lithium iodide does not conduct electricity, but when molten, it is a good conductor. So again, it's a question like first one, which we have done that in solid, there are no formation of ions. In solid, there is no formation of ions. So no conduction of no conduction of electricity. In solid, there is no formation of ions and ions cannot conduct electricity. There is no movement. Okay, next one, the B part. The results of the experiment on electrolysis are shown in the following table. Complete the table. The first line has been done for you. Electrolyte is aqueous copper sulfate. Now, remember, if there is no concentrated or dilute is given to us. Okay, we have to consider to be dilute. If they have mentioned only aqueous, 
consider to be dilute for concentrated they will mention concentrate so noora can you uh, sorry not noora bonya can you tell me what will be product at cathode um, sir, copper yes because it is aqueous copper sulfate so cuso4 plus h2o there will be four ions cu2 plus so4 2 minus h plus and oh minus between cu2 plus and h plus we know the less reactive cation is cu so yes it will be copper product at anode is oxygen and the electrolyte will change to so if copper and oh is liberated what is left it will change to it will change to sulfuric what sulfuric acid yes because it will be h plus 1 so4 2 minus cross multiply it will be sulfuric acid okay if it is molten then yes it gets consumed next is potassium chloride which is concentrated so kcl kcl plus h2o once again k plus cl minus h plus oh minus but it is concentrated electrode is carbon which is an inert that's graphite actually product at cathode what will be product at cathode akbar what will be product at cathode uh hydrogen yes very good it will be hydrogen so this got liberated product at anode is chlorine because it is concentrated and what will be electrolyte changes to oh sorry electrolyte changes to huma electrolyte will be changed to uh potassium hydroxide yes very good koh because there is k plus and oh minus which is left they will combine and it will be ko very good moving on to next question the c part the diagram below shows the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid hydrogen is formed at negative electrode so hydrogen at negative electrode and oxygen at positive electrode and the concentrated sulfuric acid increases the diagram is given the ions present in dilute acids are h plus oh minus and so4 to minus write an equation for the reaction at cathode two mark question so who will answer this alia yes, um should i annotate it or no you can just tell you can tell me okay um at cathode hydrogen is formed uh, so it will be 2h plus oh. 2e gives a uh, hydrogen so 2h plus 2e gives h2 anything needs to be added or this is the final thing yes we have to add the charges i think we have to add h plus over here okay because it's an ion all negative or maybe positive electrode reaction which are there whether it's cathode or anode we have to start with an ion if we are starting with a positive electrode then it's gain of electron and if we are starting with a negative negative ion sorry negative ion then it's a loss of electrons so it is 2h plus plus 2 electrons gives h2 balancing is for one mark and writing equation is for one mark so that's how it is two marks next one complete the equation for the reaction at positive electrode which is anode so we know that anode always it will be from oh minus ions losing electrons will give you o2 plus dash plus dash so enough miss i'm not sure okay manas 
mess for it will be um must do it too okay and see there are four oh minus okay four oh minus so it will form two h two o that's correct and there will be one molecule of oxygen now i i had already i had told you oh uh, yes one yeah um, this is a four e minus four yes electron. four electrons see now over here remember for cathode equation oh, sorry for anode equation that is loss of electrons okay so anode equation i'm giving you an example you can write like this 4oh minus minus 4e giving 2h2o plus o2 this is one way of representation means you can write the electrons before arrow minus 4e that also you can write or you can write in the way which is given to you which is 4oh minus losing four electrons plus 2h2o plus o2 okay so this is something which you can write it in both ways and just excuse me for one minute i'll be back you want to whether you want to write minus electrons first or electrons on the opposite side of the arrow but both is one and the same next one suggest an explanation of why concentration of sulfuric acid increases adi yes can you answer this um i'm not really sure okay um who can answer this why the concentration of sulfuric acid increases see it is h2so4 dilute okay means there is already water anode it's dilute right yes manas so if when something is dilute it means it has more water content correct and because both hydrogen and oxygen uh being liberate, liberated there'll be more um ions of so sulfuric acid. acid yes that's that's absolutely correct manas good so over here we can see that at anode oxygen is liberated and at cathode h2 eventually which means water is getting used up so if water is getting liberated definitely the concentration of h2so4 will increase so explanation why concentration of sulfuric acid increase because it is water which is used up it's a one mark question so we we will write that water has been liberated or water is used up so eventually my sulfuric acid becomes more and more concentrated that's absolutely correct and moving on to the last question in the apparatus used in the c the power supply is removed and immediately replaced by a voltmeter a reading on the voltmeter shows that electrical energy is being produced suggest an explanation for how this energy is produced manas wait yes how this energy is produced yes vanya um yes i'm not sure but what are was it may be from the oxidation of oxygen and oxygen loses two electrons and that would move to the cathode and provide energy like yeah okay so now over here basically what is happening is now this is not a actual part of electrolysis okay but still we can ask manas because manas has raised and yes manas what is your answer manas i think it was the previous electrons that were passing in the wire that were left mm -hmm. in the solution okay uh okay so now over here it is basically a part which is called as hydrogen oxygen fuel hydrogen is acting as a fuel right we know one of the uses of hydrogen which act as a fuel so where what happens is 
when there is a formation of hydrogen and oxygen at one end the fuel i mean hydrogen act as a fuel and that is the one which produces energy because fuel is something which produces energy right so over here what we are going to write is that it is it is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell it is a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell okay where where the reaction means h2 reacts with oxygen to produces water so h2 plus o2 produces water and this reaction produces energy this reaction produces energy okay and it is an exothermic process it's an exothermic process so over here you know what is happening over here it is like let's say you know this dry cell which you which you put it in your uh, maybe ac remote or maybe in the mouse now what is happening what is that cell can i say there is a chemical energy inside the cell which is getting converted to what electrical energy okay over here remember it is not electrolysis it is ulta it is it is called as electrochemical cell means in electrolysis what is happening due to electricity chemical energy was taking place there was a breaking down of compound but now over here instead of battery the voltmeter is used so what is happening whatever the chemical reaction is taking place between h2 and o2 that is converted into electrical energy so over here there is a conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy so this hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is not a direct topic of electrolysis there is a topic which is called as electricity and electrical cell which is a small topic where where instead of using graphite and carbon electrodes there are metal electrodes which are used and depending on you know how which metal electrode you are using how will be the difference in voltmeter so basically electrochemical cell so but that is not a direct part of electrolysis so this is something which is which we will be studying in the later part like not now uh, like later when when it's a it's a it's a different topic actually it's a different uh, subject concept so over here this this is indirect way of electrolysis because it is reverse of electrolysis in electrolysis i repeat once again electrolysis from the word using electricity we are breaking a compound and this process is when chemical reaction is taking place electricity is generated so it is a chemical energy to electrical energy and electricity electrolysis was electrical energy to chemical energy and this was overall about the whole concept of electrolysis so you have already studied about like you know how mcq questions can be asked how theory questions can be asked you should know like you have to look at the marks the the main uh, thing is where you have to look at the mark that for how many marks they have asked also you have to write the answers in a very crisp format okay you don't have to write long long stories because they will definitely not give you that many space but even if they give you space but you have to be very sure about what you need to write because that is something which will give you the marks okay so this was a overall view about electrolysis and with this we have completed the whole one topic a very very important topic of uh, electrolysis and when we are meeting next we will be solving we will be starting with another very crucial topic which is organic chemistry hydrocarbons so that is what we are going to start with uh, the with the next topic fuels yeah the equation is not balanced thank you it has to be 2h2 thank you manas it has to be 2h2 plus o2 gives 2h2 so yeah next topic will be of our hydrocarbons and uh, just to inform you that this week we won't be having a lecture on tuesday 
reason due to Eid holiday. So Tuesday and Wednesday, there will be no lecture. So this week, we will be having only lecture of today. That's on Sunday. Tuesday is a holiday. We will directly be meeting on next Sunday for the lecture. And over there, we will be starting with uh, organic, which is another very crucial topic for year 11. Okay, guys. So with this, we'll end up the session for today. Thank you very much. See you in the next lecture and enjoy your holidays and have a great day. See you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.